Welcome to the DevOps Lab Demystifying ARM Templates, the series. If you're talking about DevOps, you have to talk infrastructure as code. And if you're talking about Azure, that's ARM templates. Now, personally, I've always had trouble learning ARM. So in this very special series, we deconstruct ARM templates and walk you through everything. We start from nothing at all and we'll slowly ramp you up to the expert level. On this episode, we have a very special guest, Alex Frankel. Welcome to the show, Alex. Great to have you. Hey, Bo. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then why ARM templates? Sure. Um, so I'm a program manager on the ARM deployment. So basically making it as easy as possible for you to get your infra up in Azure the way that you want it. Um, in terms of uh, why ARM templates or what are so important about ARM templates, it is the, the native infrastructure as code tool for Azure. Um, so you may be deploying your infrastructure via the portal, or you may have ventured into automating some of those things with PowerShell or the CLI or the SDKs. But where you really start to take advantage of the platform as much as possible is when you switch over to this declarative solution, which is ARM templates. So and let's let's back up for one second. Yeah. For my viewers that don't know, what is infrastructure as code? Yeah, so infrastructure as code is literally describing the infrastructure that you want in a file. And the main benefits you get from that are, are the same reasons you check in any code, right? You get repeatability, and then you can start tracking your code, tracking changes, testing those changes, and understanding that if anything goes wrong, you have a paper trail of exactly what happened that, that led up to that. So that's great. ARM templates, that's the native way to do infrastructure as code. So uh, now I kind of understand what infrastructure is code and why it's important. So ARM, I guess, is the native way to define it. There are lots of different ways to do infrastructure as code, right? Right. Like describing your infrastructure in a, a PowerShell file is is great in the sense that that is infrastructure as code, right? It get, you get all the benefits that I just talked about. The big change that you get from using a, a different infrastructure as code solution like PowerShell or CLI, which we describe as imperative, which is saying I want to do this and then I want to do this and then I want to do this, is switching over to declarative with a tool like ARM templates. And what declarative does is it says, I want all of these things. I, this is the what. And I don't care how you do it. I don't care what order you do it in, but I want to get to this place. It's, it's goal seeking is what we sometimes call it. And that means that you don't have to worry about things like error checking or checking if that resource already exists and if I need to update it or create it or any of those things. You describe the whole payload and you send that to Azure and we take care of the rest of the work for you. So and, let me see Let me see if I got this right, right? In, yeah. in an imperative world, which I've done a lot is I have like a bash script or a CLI script or a, 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 a PowerShell script where I have Azure CLI commands, <coughs> excuse me, that provisions all the stuff that I need. So maybe I'll say provision for me an app service or this type of storage, this big, so on and so forth. Um, whereas in an ARM template, I basically just say, this is the end state that I want to be in. So now tell me if I'm right or wrong here. What makes the imperative world kind of weird is that the order that I call my commands, that starts making a difference, right? And then also, I then have to start adding all sorts of weird checks, right? Like, oh, did I already pre-deploy this with this name already? And things like that. And then in a declarative fashion with an ARM template, I can just say, this is my end state, make it look like that. And if I don't have anything, it will go ahead and create for me all the resources that I need. But if I already have everything, it just doesn't do anything. Right, exactly. And so you get, there's all, I mean, the more you, the deeper you get into declarative, you realize there's actually so many benefits that you don't really think of initially. So yeah, you don't need to do error handling. Another big one that you get is uh, automatic parallel deployments. So unless you tell us otherwise, we will fan out those calls and deploy everything all at once. 
So that will massively speed up your deployment as opposed to doing it um, imperatively, which is going to do one after the other unless you specify otherwise. So the nature of declarative versus imperative is declarative is, is parallel by default. Um, some of the other things that we can do because we know all of the things that you want to exist is we can actually check a lot more things up front. So we can understand the relationships between resources and if those kind of like puzzle pieces are actually going to fit together in the way that you expect them to before we deploy anything. So what that saves you is instead of getting halfway through that imperative PowerShell deployment and then finding out you have a bad naming convention or your IP space overlaps or whatever it is, right? We check all that up front to make sure that to the best of our ability, we think this deployment is going to succeed. So let's go ahead and, and start with it. Yeah. Another benefit that I see a lot between imperative versus declarative is with imperative, the version and state of my environment is really, really important depending on how I call my scripts, right? And then in the DevOps world, I want to just be able to run those same scripts over and over again in all of my deployments, which you can do, but it's a little bit tricky imperative-wise, right? I think in a declarative world with ARM templates, it's just a piece of cake, right? I mean, here's my ARM template, do whatever you need to to fix my environment so it ends up looking like this. Yeah, exactly. So the 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 word that we use to describe that is is item potent or item potency. And what item potency means is no matter how many times that you deploy or redeploy uh, something, we will always reach the same final state. So if something is item potent, you don't need to worry at all if it's a create or an update or check through error handling or anything like that. You just say, I want all of these things. By giving it over to you, Azure, I'm expecting it to be like exactly like that when I'm done. And I can just rely on that kind of core principle of item potency. So really, once I figure out how to create these ARM templates, it's going to simplify my life a lot, right? Totally. We, we see over and over and over again uh, customers transitioning from uh, imperative uh, automation models to declarative models and becoming much more successful. Literally, the rate of success of their deployments goes up because of all those things that we talked about, because we can check more things up front, because we can deploy faster. Um, with ARM templates, you actually kind of bypass some of the quota limitations, whereas imperative, you're hitting these APIs over and over and over again. Because we get all the things that you, you want, we can be, be way more efficient with the API calls we're going to make. So we don't limit you to those sorts of quotas that you may have seen with, with some other tools. So generally speaking, Moving to declarative is always a win. Once you can kind of get over that hump and, and understand the model and understand that it's really different, it's a different mindset than imperative programming. But when you make that transition, life is better on the other side. All right, so you've totally convinced me that declarative is the way to go. I can't wait to dive in and, and really kind of figure out how to do all this. One last question, there are quite a few other third-party tools out there that does infrastructure as code as well, correct? So why would I potentially want to use ARM template versus some of those other tools? Totally. Um, and, and, and you said it, right? There's a variety of declarative tools that are out there. And really the thing that, that you should take away from this is that declarative is the right way to do it. And regardless of what declarative tool you choose to adopt, um, as long as it's declarative, you're kind of making that first right decision. Um, there are uh, a lot of different technologies and way, ways of doing these declarative uh, deployments, um, but they're, they're not all created equal. And, and before I even go any further, if you're using a tool and you're getting to Azure and you're happy, we're happy, right? It doesn't frankly really matter all that much, but it is good to know that by choosing the native declarative solution, which is ARM templates, you do get a few extra benefits with, which are worth noting. Um, one of the biggest ones is this idea that um, we can do this thing called pre-flight validation. Basically what happens is when you send us an ARM template, we scan over all the resources that you're going to create, and we go and tell all the different resource providers is what we call them. So whether that's compute or network or whoever, we go and say, hey, all these things are about to be created. Are these going to be successful? And each resource provider will go through a set of checks to make sure that um, it is going to do what is expected. And that's something that you actually only get with ARM templates today. And it can be a massive time saver when you think about 
quota on compute cores or overlapping IP ranges or some of those really nitty gritty details that you can get into, being able to check those up front is a, a massive value add. The other thing that's um, interesting about ARM templates, when, when you're doing these deployments, we can actually check what are the state of your Azure resources. And when you think about it, when you're doing get requests on Azure, when you're, when you're actually getting the, the, the view of Azure resources, that is the literal state of Azure at that point. And what that allows us to do is take your ARM template and take the current state of Azure and do those comparisons and predict those deployments up front. We call that tool What If, and it's, it's a really valuable new addition to kind of the ARM template end to end. And you can do all of that without having to keep track of state or, or anything like that. Very, very cool stuff. Infrastructure as code is vital in a DevOps world. And in Azure, ARM templates are the native way to do us. So join us in this series as we demystify ARM templates so every Azure developer can easily start using ARM templates. Click on the links below for more information and join us next time on the DevOps Lab. Mm-hmm.